Just listen to this. A brother came to Abba Makarius, the Egyptian, and said to him, Abba, give me a word that I may be saved. So the old man said to the brother, Go to the cemetery and abuse the dead. So the brother went to the cemetery, abused the dead by calling them names. He threw stones at them. And then he returned and told the old man about it. And the old man said to him, And did they say anything back to you? And the brother replied, No. So the old man said, Well, go back tomorrow and praise them. So the brother went out of obedience and praised the dead, calling them, O oh, you apostles, O oh, you saints and holy righteous men. And he again returned to the old man, and he said to him, Well, I have complimented the dead. And the old man said to him, And did they answer you anything? The brother said, No. And the old man said to him, You know how you insulted the dead, and they did not reply, and how you praised the dead, and they did not speak. So you too, if you wish to be saved, must do the same and become a dead man. Like the dead, take no account of either the scorn of men or their praises, and you can be saved. This story is one of the most meaningful and most important stories of my life. I remember when I read the sayings of the Desert Fathers, I remember how uh, impactful this particular story and a few others that say the same thing uh, put forward this idea of us having to become like dead people and to live in the world as if we were dead. And um, I want to approach this and I want to talk to you a bit about it today because almost always when we hear that we need to be dead to the world, that is interpreted as a sort of um, hatred towards the world, a way in which one has to condemn the world, destroy the world, or even destroy oneself. Because if you are to be dead, that is, in essence, isn't it, a way of destroying who you are. And if you are to be dead to the world, that means that, in a sense, you destroy the world and its impact, its presence in you. And I did, myself, I did believe that for quite some time, at the beginning of my monastic life, I did think that it's all about a kind of self-destruction, almost, a kind of destroying the world, death to the world, and death to oneself. Until, by the grace of God and through the wisdom of my spiritual father and the fathers of the church whom I kept on reading and to whom I kept on praying, I understood that in fact what Abba Makarius and the Desert Fathers and everyone who argues that we should be dead in the world, they are not arguing for a destruction of the self just as they are not arguing for the destruction of the world, but quite the opposite, the absolute opposite of destruction. This is the only way in which we can give birth to ourselves, to our true selves, to ourselves in Christ, and also the only way in which we can, by the grace of God, contribute to some degree to the birth of the world as the world was created to be. Until we become dead to the world, we cannot begin to exist properly. Death of ourselves to the world is the beginning of our birth into Christ. It's a 
I have often, unfortunately, been in a position where I had to offer a word of encouragement and of love to people who have just lost someone whom they loved. I've often, unfortunately, been in a position where I've been close to people who go through horrible experiences of, of loss and bereavement and pain. And uh, <clears throat> the person in front of you, when they hear that their husband or their wife, their child or their parent has died or something dreadful has happened, there's an explosion of, of anger, of, of violence. They, they lose self-control and and they scream and they yell horrible things and sometimes they kick and they hit and they there's a battle there's there's a fight against the pain that has just happened which is manifested on the outside in horrible ways and you end up having to embrace this person who's kicking at you and you end up having to caress this person who hits you and you end up having to, to whisper words of, of compassion and gentleness and kindness and love to a person who screams at you and says the most horrible things and swears and so on and so forth. <clears throat> in that reaction towards a person in pain, in deep pain, almost hysterical reaction to pain, in that reaction of yours towards that person, you are acting as someone who is on the one hand dead to that person, but also deeply, profoundly in love, in Christian love with that person. Let me explain what I mean by that. It is not natural that one should embrace someone who hits you. It is not natural that one should embrace and caress someone who kicks at you and, and does you physical bodily harm. It is not natural. It's not a natural response, the natural reaction to, to try to console and say words of kindness and love to a person who screams and yells abuse at you. In order to do that, you have to shut yourself. You have to close yourself. You have to become dead towards that person in the sense that you no longer respond to their actions. You are no longer a reaction to their action. You act from a different place. You respond and react to a different person than the person in front of you. You act based on love because if you were not to act based on love, you would have to follow the instinct of survival and you would kick back. When they kick you, you kick them. When they scream abuse of you, you scream abuse of them, right back at them. But when you act out of love, and in reaction to the deeper person than the person whom you see just coming to pieces before your eyes, then you become dead to that dying person, that person who's falling to pieces before your eyes, and you engage in love with the deeper person whom you know exists deep down. And you do everything that is in your power to be responsive to the deeper person, not the outside, the screaming, hysterical person. You do your best to be responsive and to take care of the needs of the deeper person, the person whom you know is in pain and needs love and needs support, not to respond to the actions of the person who screams at you and yells at you. When you embrace this screaming, kicking human being, on the one hand you have become dead to this screaming violent person, while at the same time your love could not be more active 
towards the real person, the deeper person, the potential of this person, which you know is hidden deep down. <clears throat> when Saint Macarius and the saints of the Church teach us to become dead to the world, this is what they tell us. They tell us that when confronted with a world that screams abuse at us and kicks us and hits us and slanders us and tries to harm us any way possible, on the one hand we should be dead to that world and not engage with their actions, do not become a reaction to these violent actions. This is one aspect of being dead to the world, but at the same time we need to embrace this screaming, kicking, violent world because we have to learn to recognize deep down in the depth of this sinful, fallen, violent world, we need to learn to recognize the potential of this world, the hidden image of God which is imprinted in the hearts of every single human being ever created from Adam till the last man or woman to be created. So we become dead to the fallenness of the world while being in profound love, in profound Christian love with the world which is created by Christ in his image in order to save the world. To be dead to the world has nothing to do with destroying the world or with destroying ourselves. It has to do with being non-responsive to the violence, the fallenness of the world, while at the same time offering this screaming, kicking world, offering this self-destructive world the kindness, the love, the patience, and above everything, the prayer and the non-judgment that the deeper potential, the deeper value of the world needs. And when we do this, when we begin to be dead in this world, to, in this way to the world, when this good, blessed death kicks in. That's when our real birth kicks in as well, because that is the moment when we begin to be born as Christians into the world, and when the birth of the world through us, through the grace that this action brings into the world, the birth of the world begins to take place as well. Nothing that is ugly, nothing that is violent, nothing that is judgmental, nothing that is in any way evil comes from God. Everything that is a fruit of the Spirit is light and joyful and loving and kind and graceful and every single are the fruit of the Spirit whom we know from the time of the Apostles all the way to the time of the saints who are alive today amongst us. We need to learn to be dead to the world in order to be truly able to love the world. We need to learn to be dead to the world so that we can begin to be born as Christians, as the saints whom we were created to become in order for that birth to take place. When slander and um, being praised becomes the same to you, when poverty or wealth becomes the same to you and having nothing or having more than necessary does not affect who you are in any way. 
when being loved or being hated, when being alone or surrounded by, I don't know, the crowd of New York City or of London does not affect your interior peacefulness in any way. That's when you've become dead to the world and at the same time a co-saviour with the one saviour, Christ himself, to the world. I've mentioned this today because I love I love the Desert Fathers, and also because, well, we celebrated Saint Anthony the Great, um, the saint of Egypt, the, the first among monastics yesterday, and, uh, <clears throat> no, the day before yesterday. Yesterday we celebrated Saint Athanasius the Great, another great saint connected with the Egyptian Fathers, and today we celebrated Saint Macarius the Great of Egypt. I think there's a great need for us Christians today to, to recognize in humility that Christianity is not an European religion, it is not a Western faith, but that Egypt and Syria and Iraq and India and all these places, starting from Palestine, Jerusalem and all these places have a huge treasure. They have the roots of our faith buried in them. And what we have are like, you know, sometimes you, you plant a seed and there's a seedling coming out and it's so weak. It grows very tall and it's quite visible, but it's so weak that any breath of the wind can kill it and every... Every, you know, more intense ray of the sun can just wither it away. That's who we are. The strength, the depth, the, the power and, and the life of our faith is here. In Egypt and in Syria and in Palestine and in Iraq and in all of these ancient places. There are so many beautiful saints in Georgia, in Armenia, in all these places. We've forgotten about them. But they, unknown to us, they are the ones who keep us alive in our faith through their prayers before the throne of God. And they are the ones, through their prayers, who have dragged us out of the world and have, oh, brought back the beauty and the truth of the true faith of orthodoxy before our eyes, before um, the eyes of our hearts. And through their prayers, we are still alive spiritually today. Look back. Look back to our roots, my brothers and my sisters, and take care of your roots before you invest anything into building yet another layer onto our very, very tall, so unsafely tall building. Let's take care of the foundation. Let's take care of the roots. May the saints of Egypt and the saints of our own desert here in the Isles, and the saints of all of these Christian places of the first millennium, many of whom we've forgotten, may they give us true life by in breathing into our hearts true faith. Amen, my brother. Amen, my sister. Amen.